Hi, welcome back to John's Random Reviews. Blow my neck, it's a bit hot anyway. I'll try my best to carry on, battle on. Anyway, we've got a treat for you today, a real treat. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd get to review this Makita tool. I've seen pictures of it and I think I've seen um, some video um, clips from the world of concrete in Nevada of this being used, but I thought I'm never gonna see this. No one at our work would get anything like this. Um, but my next door neighbor is a general builder and then we came home from work one night and in the back of his um, truck, he had one of these and I'm straight away going, oh, 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 can I borrow it? And very kindly, he's lent it to me. But what is it? A lot of people will know what it is, but in case you don't, this is a Makita 80 volt. That's two XGT batteries in this machine, concrete cutter. Now, some people call them still saws because you see a lot of, on a lot of building sites, petrol still saws. And actually the, the folks, that, um, the colleagues at work have got a petrol still saw, it's the standard. But will this be the kind of thing that's gonna catch on? It's very, very, very expensive. Now I don't know anything about still saws I probably get one running, you have the choke and everything, and you pull the pull the cable. But obviously this is a battery operated um sort of concrete cutter. Well it is, it's a battery operated concrete cutter. And it's what it's got the the biggest capacity, I think, I'll probably be end up being wrong, the biggest capacity blade on a cordless concrete cutter. I've seen some 18, um, Milwaukee and Dewalt do 18 volt ones. And I think Dewalt do uh, 36 volt with that flex volt thing. And I think you can get like a, a still one, but I think that's 18 volt. And there is another company um, who really concentrate on um, sort of gardening and chainsaws and stuff. And they've got a 36 volt one, but this is, an, well, right, let's get this straight into this. Let's get this sorted straight away. Technically, it's not 80 volt. It's 72 volts because these two batteries, we've got two, um, what they call, Makita call, 40 volt um, max, but they're actually two 36 volt batteries, which adds up with my maths as 72, so 72 volts. I guess when, you just, when you've got these fully charged, right, and you have a, just the first cut, you might get 80 volts for like a few seconds. But what we're going to do is going to go over it. We're going to have, give it a good look at. We're going to scrutinise it because I've already kind of seen things I like and things I don't like. So we're going to go and get the camera a little bit closer to have a good look at it. I'm so stoked about getting this machine because I can't afford to be buying. I'd never use this tool and I definitely couldn't afford to buy it. Right, let's have a little talk about the price. The body only, if you wanted to buy, if you're already on the XGT platform and you wanted to buy this body only, I think the cheapest I've seen this saw is about £770. But generally, let's call it £800 just for the body. You can buy it in a kit. This tool is probably best, ser best served with having two 5 amp batteries on it that would be give you all the, all the power and the run time I've, I haven't I've got one 5 amp battery which I've knackered anyway that's another story but at the moment I've got two 2.5 or two uh, yeah I've got at the moment I've got two 2.5 batteries on this um tool so if you buy it in a kit form with two 5 amp batteries and a charger my god <laughs> Oof, it's making me sweat just thinking about it I think it's about 1300 quid so Compare that to, I don't know, I don't know how much um, petrol still, saw, still saws go. I think they're about, if you had to buy one brand new, I think they're about 800 quid or maybe a bit cheaper than that. But there's loads of them, there's loads of petrol still saws on eBay floating about. A lot of them knackered and they can be temperamental. That's the thing with petrol concrete cutters. They can be temperamental. So sometimes um, you'll be fiddling about with it. It's got an engine in there. The, the, the petrol ones have got an engine and a petrol tank and it runs on two-stroke petrol and it's, you have to set the choke and all that carry on. Um, and this is to get away from petrol-driven tools. So, I've run this thing. I'll, I'll, I'll actually fire it up in a minute. This is a game-changer and I'm not saying that lightly. If you needed one of these, like if you're on the XGT platform 
and you were, you were cutting concrete or paving slabs or something like that and you didn't want a petrol cutter this is amazing this is da, da, da. this sounds and works like a petrol still saw honestly it does a little bit slower maybe but um compare compare it to like a nine inch grinder this is feel, feels the same when i set this actually what we're gonna do i'm gonna set it going <laughs> wait till you hear this it is a beast are you ready for this <laughs> God, this thing has got some serious power. Anyway, let's get the camera in a little bit and I'll go all the go over all the details and then we're gonna take it out and cut some concrete and give it a little bit of a test. Okay. Okay, let's get the serial number out of the way. This is a Makita CE001G and the blade diameter is 355 mil millimeters. And it says actually, look, it says 72 volts on it. And it says 80 volt max. So I think this um, um, concrete um, diamond cutting blade is a little bit worn. So in theory, you'll be able to do a 130 mil cut on this machine. So looking on this side, you can see the battery compartment there. And it's got like a rail that runs underneath, um, a metal rail there. And it's got sort of the handle arrangement comes off, sort of is mounted sort of on the front of it. We'll go into a little bit, I'll turn it around in a minute. It's got a bumper bar on the back and check out this. It's got a light, it's got a light. Let's see if we can turn it on. Can't really see it that well. But can you see? There, it's got a light, a concrete cutter with a light. Okay, this is the other side. I think it must have some kind of belt or something on behind there to drive the diamond disc. It's got a, like a release button for the to get the blade off there. And what's this you ask, what's this? Well, you can run a wet blade on this. As you can see, it's got a connector on the back there that you can put a hose pipe on it. Or you maybe you could put it like a pressurized can water canister. It's got a little on off switch there. And it's got um, a black sort of, it's kind of a reinforced um, fiber sort of tube that. And it comes into this, this section here. Let's hope you can see. This section here and it comes out both sides it comes out both sides goes down these little tubes this bit's nice this bit's really nice this is the bar you hold it with and it's kind of yeah it's like a over molding sort of really grippy really grippy and it looks really really hard wearing obviously that's got a metal bar in it um with a rubber over molding this bit of the bottom here it's got this little sort of rail where you can stand it up and it's got rubber bumpers and then back there you can see it's got a spring there and what that means is it's kind of the front of it where the blade is it's kind of got some cushioning sort of like that it's, the anti, it's an anti-vibration thing so that flexes there it must have something else at the back there i imagine some kind of other other springs to sort of so it it doesn't rattle the back of the machine about one thing I don't particularly like, it's a good idea to have these little wheels here so you can sort of tip it up and then run it down like a, a groove or, you know what I mean, so you can get a straight cut. But yeah, the wheels are, I think they're aluminium, but there's, <laughs> there's no bearings in them. And when I've kind of tipped it up a little bit, they kind of like, obviously they're this already a little bit rusty. That's enough of that. I'm not a drummer. Anyway, these are, this is another shot of the two wheels on the bottom, you can see. They don't turn so well. Should have had a bearing in that or something, a seal bearing in that, but it's not. But you can see the rail here that supports the tool and the rubber bumpers and this metal tray along the bottom. Right then, so this is the back where the on-off switch, a little bit of rubber over molding on there, which is quite nice. This is the trigger. Obviously it's got a lock button there which is i don't like this at all to be honest with you the lock button is only on one side i hope you can see it and it's it's uh, like it's a bit tight <laughs> it's a bit tight that and it's like you can't really get in the right position to sort of press it in it's kind of like a bit a bit cack handed i don't like that at all should have that should have been designed a bit better and it should have had one on the other side it's got your light button there in case you're working in the dark 
And this is where the batteries clip on. Now I'll try and get one off. Hang on, hang on. Right. So that was an example. I know I was doing it one-handed because I was trying to film at the same time. But you can see where the rails are, where the battery goes on. And hopefully you can see there, down there, it's already got like muck getting into the contacts. And although when it's on the machine, kind of like, you know, it's not really going to get a lot of dust in there. But you can imagine a bit of a cloud of dust around me doing a lot of um, concrete cutting. It can get down that gap there. And it can get into these terminals. Whether that long term, that's going to be a problem. But getting the batteries on and off is a bit sticky. Do you know what I mean? A bit sticky. So I don't particularly. Let's get see if we can get that one back on. It's not too bad. Well, he says. See, it's quite tight to get it on. Oh, what a lovely day up in a place called Abbeystead. Well, no, near Abbeystead. Anyway, it's lovely. Twenty-five degrees. I've not known it's too this hot. Anyway, I've got the steel saw outside. I found a little bit of um, curb stone. Oh, lift it up. Hang on. Here we go. This is a proper bit, of, a proper bit of concrete. No reinforcing in it, but it's a heavy bit of concrete. We'll put that back down. This is a heavy tool as well. This is very, very heavy. But um, will it cut this concrete curb stone? We'll see in a minute. Now then. Coming a little bit, cameraman. When I'm going to pan down to this court, and just before the court, I'm going to put all my PPE on. So we're going to have goggles, a mask, ear defenders, the whole nine yards. So in a minute, when you do the court, you'll see just the, 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 my hands and the saw, and I'll be wearing all my PPE. Okay. So I'm putting my PPE on. Don't keep the camera down. Keep the camera down. I'm putting my PPE on. Right, let's go for it. Wait till you hear this thing crack up. Look at Right, hang on, keep the camera down, PPE off, goggles off, mask off, ear defenders up. Right, camera up, camera up, there we go. Whew. Right, look at this cut. That's a pretty good cut. Yes, it is a little bit slower than the petrol still saw. Is it awesome? I think so. Is it expensive? Yes, very, very expensive. But if you don't want to deal with petrol and two-stroke petrol and engines, and you wanted to cut curb stones or you wanted to cut paving slabs, this could be the tool for you. Well, I think I've given it quite a good review. I'd have liked to do a lot more cutting with it, but like I said, it's not mine. I didn't want to wear the blade down. I'd, and God forbid, I didn't want to knacker this and having to pay 800 quid. Do I think it's a good bit of kit? Yes, I think it's absolutely awesome. Is it overpriced? Yes. I think it's chronically overpriced. Now, Mikita, you were going to say there's a lot of technology in here and one thing and another, and it's top-end technology, but 800 quid, no, 500 would probably been a good price for this, not 800 quid. But if you can afford it, it's an amazing bit of kit, especially if you put 5-amp batteries on this beast. So, other things of note, it's really heavy. <laughs> it needs that other handle. There's no way on earth you could sort of run this one-handed. Maybe you could if you kind of run it on the wheels like that. Do you know what I mean? That's, you're doing a really straight groove. But nevertheless, I'm stoked to be able to review this. Dan, the next door, thank you so much for lending me this. Oh my goodness, I'm so stoked. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you want to, whatever. Okay, random is rad. Rock on.